I have a nine-year-old son who came home the other day and said to me, having nothing to do with this play, just a conversation they've been having in school, he said, Dad, do you realize that I'm part of the last generation that will know the difference between the real world and the digital world? And I suddenly thought, have you been reading the play? I said, <laughs> The Hideaway is a realm within the nether, a beautiful realm uh, at the center of which is a Victorian house and a Victorian family. Users can come to this realm and enjoy the beauty, but there's also... Complications. Just because it's virtual doesn't mean it isn't real. The complete sort of beauty and sensory experience of being in a virtual realm starts to be as interesting or more interesting than the real world, and people start spending more and more time there. And I think, in a dramatic way, it, it deals with the, um, what that's gonna mean emotionally, both morally but also emotionally. I get the feeling that it's uh, an insidious play, in a way. Stop, we have, we have the, the right, right to remain, to remain anonymous. anonymous. I'm someone who, who fundamentally believes there should be no censorship of the internet. Every time a foreign country starts putting restrictions on citizens' ability to go online or starts closing down certain sites or only letting you go to parts of sites, I'm always up in arms that that shouldn't be, that it has to be free, that, that that freedom of expression and that freedom of exchange of information is ultimately a good thing for the world. Everything we've created uh, started off as an idea. Images, ideas, create reality. Everything around us, our houses, our bridges, our wars, our peace treaties, began as figments in someone's mind before becoming a physical or social fact. Ideas are as real as reality because they're that powerful. They're that powerful that they have as much of an influence over our lives and what we do and what we say and what we create as um, material things.